Hey everyone, welcome to Forecasting with Friends. I am Allison Gargaro. So happy to have you guys here today. You know, you live in Houston. Maybe you're watching us from elsewhere across the country. As always, thanks for joining us. Uh, you know, we've been talking about wet weather. It's been so humid here, but boy, you guys, when we get to the seven day forecast, you're gonna like what we have to say. Finally gonna be clearing out. Finally gonna be seeing the sunshine. Finally going to be seeing maybe slightly cooler temperatures. Not much of it, but hey, low humidity is what we like to hear in Southeast Texas this time of year. But even though I'm alone in studio, we have a virtual friend with us. So I want to bring in Bill Kirk. He is the CEO and co-founder of Weather Trends 360. Bill, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Allison, happy to be here. It's 45 here today, so we're oh, cool. Yeah, you have a jacket on, and I am in a tank top over here for good reason. <laughs> well, well so, I'm Captain Kirk, right? So we're in the Star Trek spaceship today, and the spaceship's always like 60 degrees, freezing cold. So. Hey, I get that. I have a blanket on underneath. So right before uh, Forecast Me Friends started, we were kind of doing a little intro. So, Bill, can you tell the folks that are watching a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so again, I'm Captain Kirk. So that's why I'm, we're in the Star Trek spaceship studio here today. Uh, Air Force Gulf War veteran, 1989. I'm dating myself, right? McDill Air Force Base, Tampa, Florida, and met a famous general, Storm and Norman Schwarzkopf. And that's kind of how he said, hey, you're the scientist. Give me an answer. Don't give me a hedge and never say a 30% chance of rain. He said, so again, it's kind of where we started thinking in long range forecasting. So we started thinking statistics and cycles and things that evolve slowly to predict next year's weather, you know, everywhere on earth. So that's what we do today. I know it sounds crazy, but that's what we do. That's awesome. And I mean, I think people look at meteorologists sometimes and they're like, why didn't you get it right? And it's like, well, we have a lot of models to go through. I mean, yeah. ask people about their March Madness brackets and probably doesn't <laughs> look too good. <laughs> exactly. But what got you interested in the weather? So again, as a kid growing up in Hawaii, right? You ask any meteorologist, right? I don't know if you saw the latest, you know, Twister movie, but it's it's yeah. that kid passion. We had a hundred inch rain event in, I know you, you can experience that in Texas, right? So imagine yeah. Harvey times about eight. Um, you know, that's what we had as a kid in Hawaii for a week and it was just 50 mile an hour winds. And, you know, my mom's business, was, furniture business was collapsing. And anyways, that kind of traumatic event that got me interested in then joined the Air Force. And, uh, you know, so it was really, you know, that the Air Force is really where it changed thinking for your point, physics changes mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. To how can I make a long range forecast that doesn't change? So I, having that, you know, maybe divine intervention, I meet in Schwarzkopf, right? I mean, don't change your mind. I'm mean, like, I, I gotta change my mind. Physics, we're changing every day, new models. And so we started thinking statistics and cycles and it just a just a, again, kind of a blessing I look at because it set us down the path of doing what we do today. That's incredible. So can we talk about the hurricane season? Because I think that's on top of everyone's mind. You know, Colorado State just came out with their update for the next two weeks saying, hey, like it might be slow. But I mean, we talk about the peak of the hurricane season. That's only halfway through. We still have several months to go. So what are you guys looking at and how can people kind of prepare for what is potentially expected? Yeah, it ain't over. So what we do, again, I think one cycle that's maybe being overlooked is this MJO. I don't know if you talk about Maddie and Julian oscillation cycle, but it's a it's a pulse. It's a tropical pulse that goes around the world in theory of uh, convections and storms. We're in a phase that just eh, will kill the Atlantic. That We're coming out of that phase here probably in about 10 days. So we're, we're concerned. You've got all the energy you need in the Atlantic, right? I mean, it's, you know, the Gulf, right? You're probably in the upper 80s, 90s Gulf temperatures. Uh, so all the fuel's there. There's no wind shear. There's no Africa dust. Um, I think everything's there to happen, unlike some other years where you'd say at this point, eh, it's going to be a bust. Uh, we don't think it's a bust. We still think we'll be well above average when we count the storms, but more importantly, who gets hit? So we, we kind of create in our long range kind of a pulse type theory as well of where do we see massive rainfall convection? And unfortunately, that's the Gulf and Texas. All right. So we actually had been our year ahead forecast actually projected to Texas, probably your second wettest in history up to what was that? 17, right? 80 yeah. inches of rain I think was with, with Herbie. Um, for the year. Uh, we had yet 72 inches for this year. So we think you got a lot of rain left and that means a tropical event. Um, so we're not out of the woods. I think again, let's see what happens here in about uh, 10 days. Uh, and then we still have, you know, two and a half months of yeah. uh, hurricane season. <laughs> well, I mean, and even this little low, low that's been off our coast. I mean, I'm looking at the radar off to the side and there's so much rain over the Gulf right now. Thankfully, we've been spared a little bit, but just like you said, Houston knows flooding. We are flat, so you even get a, one system coming in and 
it's going to be potentially destructive. I mean, we went through the derecho and barrel, and we know what it's like to have the power poles down, the power out. So I think that's going to be something that we are keeping a really close eye out on. Yeah, again, and I always joke, our, our clients are big Fortune 500 clients. We're predicting not only the weather you're ahead, but their sales. So an interesting tidbit, I did this once on the competitor networks, the NBC years ago, but talking about what things do well in hurricanes, right? And one that was really weird is mousetraps. You know, like, because we have a lot of the mousetrap clump at companies, you know, and like, why hurricanes and mousetraps? You'll see this three, four, five, six hundred percent spike in mousetrap sales, right? With an advancing hurricane. And we actually dug under the covers, did some research, talked to consumers. It's women, right? So when your house may be partially damaged, maybe the kitchen roof got blown off, but you're still living in the house, right? You have no choice. You're living in the home. You come back, you're trying to repair it. The wives would kind of line up the kitchen with mouse traps, So they'd, see, you know, they'd buy 20 of them, right? Because after a flooding event, you do see a lot of rodents, right? They're escaping like everybody else into your partially damaged home, right? So that was just one category that with a hurricane can go up like a thousand percent um, in advance of that impending storm. So, wow. Well, I think I need to go put some mouse traps in my yeah, hurricane. Yeah, I stock up on those. If I'm Houston, right, you, you're, you still, you're not out of the woods yet. So, uh, oh, you no. Line up, and then the fire ant hills that literally just get picked up by the water and then just go down the road. It's like, right. no, yep. thank you. There you go. I didn't see, I didn't even think about that one, right? So, that's another one, right? Mm -hmm. So, you guys have been through it, right? So, unfortunately, I don't think you're out of the woods. I think you got another event, hopefully not a, 20, 30, 40 inch rain event, but like I said, even, you know, eight, nine, 10 inch event, that's going to be a big deal. Yeah, something really impactful. So I want to transition to wildfire season. Why is this going to be one of the busiest uh, and maybe most damaging wildfire seasons that we've seen in what, three, four years? We had it. So again, we do a lot of year ahead for like insurance companies. So we project, you know, that we said the tornado season would be the worst in 13 years nationally, which ended up being the top two in history. It was the worst in 13 years since 11. Uh, the other thing was fires would be the worst in four years. You can look at the really wet, snowy weather that California had the last couple winters, record snowfall. The underbrush grows, it gets thick and green, and then it dies out a little bit in the summertime when they dry out. But there's a lot of tinder there to burn. Um, and so they're, you know, right now I think we're the worst in four years. We're up about, last year, as you recall, the wildfire season here in the U.S. last year was 60% below average, the least in like almost 30 years. It was all up in Canada. So we didn't have a fire season really last year on a national scale. Um, this year, again, worse than four. Next year is actually even worse. We actually have it the worst, uh, I think, 11 years. Wow. We got to go back quite a way. And again, just because we think it's going to be a dry cycle across the south. I know Houston winter, we have the driest in five years. Coolest in four, but driest in five. So not a lot of rain in that west coast, deep south areas. But again, we have potential for a lot of fuel for the fire starting early next year, not 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 late. Um, really, again, to your west, it's more of the, I know you had the huge fire in Texas this year. That was, again, what happened? Right? You had a lot of rain, a lot of underbrush grew, dried out real fast, and then a tinderbox. Um, same scenario as the in the west. Yeah, and I mean, I used to work in California, so I remember that it'd be so dry, the Santa Ana winds, but then they'd get a lot of rain and then mudslides would happen. So it's like these communities that get hit by one big weather event. And then it's like the next one comes the next season. The good news again, we'll see again, that Tonga volcano is a big fly in the ointment that I think too many people have overlooked. If you recall back in January of 22, Tonga exploded. It was an oceanic Southern hemispheric volcano, pumped up 4 trillion gallons of water vapor. That's 10% of the entire atmosphere. So that's why the world has gotten very wet. If you look at it on a world index scale that we track, you've had the flooding in Texas, the Northeast, LA had a flood in April, the Midwest, you know, Mississippi River flooding, the Olympics, right? The French yeah. the rivers, we've seen that wet. That cycle's flipping, right? We're going into drought dry cycle, which is fires, hurricanes, we still think bad hurricanes next year, but it's more of a droughty cycle that's developing, you know, right now for, for 2025, um, so. Um, We'll see. We'll know soon. Yeah, exactly. And just looking at the drought monitor across Texas and, you know, things have probably changed in the last few weeks. But at one point we just had so much rain here in Texas and then hill country out to our west had nothing. And we're like, hey, can we give you some of our rain? Like, just take it. We have a surplus. So it's interesting to see how you can be so close to other parts of, you know, maybe your state or the region. And it's just completely different stories. Yeah, yeah. But we had dipped about 24% of the country was in a dry to drought phase, so very, very low drought about back in June. And then now it's starting to build up again. We got about, I don't know what it is lately, but 57% of the country's dry to droughts. We're, 
we're definitely seeing the cycle of heading back to a dry pattern um, into 2025. So floods will be replaced with droughts and tornadoes won't be a big issue next year. It'll be, you know, droughts and fires and hurricanes. Well, good thing because the tornadoes, I mean, even just the wrath of barrel moving out of Texas, all the tornadoes that we were watching from that, it's just truly incredible. But Bill, before you leave us, you gave us a little bit of a hint, but what can us here in Houston and Southeast Texas expect this winter and then maybe even beyond? Yeah, so we again, uh, we were good at predicting temp rain and snow by week by mile everywhere on Earth. Uh, we actually see kind of a bullseye of drought developing. And again, so you're in it. Uh, we have you your winter the driest in five, well below average rainfall, uh, coolest in four. So I don't, you know, it's just kind of going to be a nice-ish winter, I guess, by your standards. Cool. Uh, um, relative to Houston. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, and then getting into next year, again, it, it's polar opposite. I, I think you're headed for a way below average year. So again, we're going to be talking more about droughts. We'll see about fires again to the west, you know, in Texas. That was an odd event, but um, certainly the fires could be epic to your, you know, more southwest in the, you know, California and those areas. But um, so again, kind of droughtish is, I think, where we're headed. And then again, can't rule out hurricanes next year. We think it's another active above average year for next year. Mm -hmm. No shear you know, all the good favorable conditions in theory. But again, drought, I would say droughts and in floods, right? So you could get a big storm at some point next next summer. Well, good to know, Bill Kirk. We appreciate you on Forecasting with Friends. You have a great rest of your day and you stay warm in there. See you, Allison. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> well, it's so great to hear. And I know I just a lot of folks are wondering, you know, what can we expect this year? And as you guys know, I moved here in right around Christmas. So let's just call it Jan 1. We have seen pretty much everything. There was a freeze. There has been severe weather. There's been flooding, you know, obviously tropical activity. Uh, so it will be interesting to see exactly what happens come the next few months and into the next year. But we want to take a quick break and I will actually have a little bit of a forecast on what we can expect temperature wise in the short term and potentially long term. You're not going to want to miss it. A little change over time when the weather is Fox 26 is.
6 YouTube page. Like and subscribe today. A little change all the time and the weather. Welcome back to Forecasting with Friends, everyone. So like we were talking about in the last few minutes, what is the weather going to look like? Well, it's been busy. Houston pretty much had a wild month of August. There was a seven day stretch of afternoon highs at or above 100 degrees. Then we ended the month with below average temperatures and pretty rainy, rainy weather rather. And we're rainy today. But what does it look like? from here on out in the short term and what can we expect over the next three months? I have that forecast. Happy September everyone. We have made it and boy, the summer has just flown by. I want to give you some temperature outlooks for the next six to 10 days, but then also for the next three months, because as we will be transitioning into fall, I would say maybe some other states more so than us here in Texas, but hey, you know, football has started, so it has to start feeling like it's soon, right? Well, maybe not so much. Here's a look at what next weekend and then into the portion of the following week is going to look like, at least temperature wise across Southeast Texas. We are going to be very, very close to season so, uh, you know, temperatures this past week and weekend were not too bad because of the rain. So we'll be very similar to that, but that does not stop here in Southeast Texas. Take a look at the Midwest, Chicago to St. Louis, down to Nashville. They are going to be below average and we're seeing that out along the Northeast coast as well. Well, the Florida Peninsula likely going to be warm during that time. Hey, Miami during this time of year is still pretty sticky and taking you out west to Phoenix, Salt Lake City, even up into the Pacific Northwest, their temperatures are going to be well above average. Again, this is the next six to 10 days. As for rain chances, our coast looks like we could be seeing a few of those showers, but the further inland you go across the state of Texas, the likely drier it's going to be. New Orleans looks to be pretty wet overall through the extended forecast and so is the northeastern states all the way down to Florida. But take a look at folks really extending from Dallas to Chicago, Minneapolis, the Dakotas, and even into Montana and Wyoming. They are going to be pretty dry. So extended things look mm, like not much is going to be happening, at least in the skies. But let's talk about what we're going to be seeing for the next few months. So yes, we're at the beginning of September. So the entirety of September through October and November. Take a look at this. The lower 48. The entire continental US is going to be above average. You can see some spots maybe just slightly above average, whereas others out over the four corners, the state of Florida and the Northeast all the way up to Maine going to be well above average. And you can see our color scale here. It's getting close to those dark reds. So that means fall is likely going to be spent with above average temperatures for most across the country. And that does include us right here in H town Southeast Texas, uh, you know, a few bars up from average. Th what that means for us is basically soup season. You got to kick it to the side because things are not going to be really cooling down anytime soon. But you're probably wondering, OK, does that mean we're going to be getting a lot of showers or not so much? Well, honestly, for us, it's average, meaning we have equal chances. It's not going to be uh, too, too wet and it's not going to be all too dry. The eastern section of the United States likely going to be seen above average rain chances and then folks in the desert southwest likely below average, especially uh, the western side of the state there. But you can see as we zoom in, meaning really uh, not going to be too overly active, at least in the skies and temperatures likely going to stay warm as we head into fall. So, you know, if you have any plans to, you know, bring the crock pot out, you might have to dust that off a little bit later because it's still going to be warm. So maybe that means a bit more grilling season for us here in Southeast Texas. Am I always talking about food? Unfortunately, yes, because I'm always thinking about but, you know, it, it's just so interesting because uh, the 
Climate Prediction Center does come out with these forecasts. You know, we have six to 14 day outlooks. We have the next three months and I was actually going through and you can see three months out from that from out from that out from that like all the way into 2025. Things change, so we're going to keep you updated on all of that as always, but Maybe you're here in H-Town and looking for something fun to do. Tonight is opening night for the latest art installation at Discovery Green in downtown Houston. From 6 to 8 p.m., you can experience the tunnel located on the lawn. The installation features 12 foot tall structures arranged to form a 100 foot long tunnel of light. Take a look at how cool that is. Instagram, get ready. Pics is going to be popping everywhere. Visitors can interact with the art to guide their path through the installation. It's going to be open through October 6th. So we're not even at the 6th of September yet. So you got a whole month. I wish they would keep that up for Christmas. I love light displays that you can go with your friends, something fun to do, take pictures, bring family. Discovery Green sounds like it's open. You could bring your pets. You know, my sweet little rider boy needs a nice new picture up on, on his Insta. So maybe that's where I'll take him. Well, something fun to do and, you know, chance for some showers, though. So keep that in mind tonight. But honestly, it's a beautiful weekend to do so because things will be drying out. The ever so awaited forecast is coming up just after the break. Fox 26 is. YouTube page. Like and subscribe today. A little change all the time when the weather Welcome back to Forecasting with Friends. We had some great interviews this morning. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'm hoping we'll get another interview for you guys tomorrow. Just want to make sure everybody's staying up to date on the weather and it's been gloomy. Ugh, this is the type of weather that you just want to sit on your couch, bundled up, watching a movie, reading a book, hanging out with your dog. I'm just giving you ideas, y'all. But 
not super rainy yet and keyword is yet because our latest forecast models are showing that some moisture is going to be moving on shore. We just haven't seen it. If anything, it's a bit breezy. Take a look at the winds northeast anywhere from 10 to 15, nearly 20 miles per hour. But the feels like temps are in the upper 80s. It is feeling humid regardless. But here's a look at the last 30 minutes and most of the rain has been sitting offshore. Now folks that are on Galveston Island Boulevard Peninsula saying no, 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 it's been raining and it has close to the coast and a, a bit inland to uh, Baytown, Texas City, League City, Alvin. But take a look at the heavy rain along the immediate coast. That's why we are under a flood watch continuing until 7 a.m. tomorrow because likely more rounds of rain today and then even into tomorrow morning. But this is the latest forecast model and it did update. So I want to show you what it is saying. Still likely after lunchtime, we're talking one, two o'clock. Those isolated showers pushing inland to Liberty, Livingston, Huntsville, the Woodlands, Tomball, Katy, and then even down to Rosenberg. And then it just continues. It's almost like a conveyor belt of moisture. Now we haven't seen much lightning associated with these. Not ruling out the chance to see it, but I will say it's probably just going to be on and off showers. Then things inland dry out. Then tomorrow morning, guess what? Coastal rain could be seeing a few isolated showers through Houston uh, through the day on Friday, but a front will be passing through. And as it does, all of that moisture in the Gulf that we've been watching it's an area of low pressure meandering just off our coast is going to be kicked out to the east with the approach of the front. So let me show you it in our moisture levels in the atmosphere. Rain, rain, you know the drill. Well, when that front arrives, it clears it out. So pretty much immediately we are going to be seeing no rain chances starting on Saturday, lower humidity, AKA drier air and some beautiful mornings. Remember I said sit on the couch? Well, it'll be sunny out, but it's gonna be a little bit cool. We're talking 60s for wake up temps. Now I want to mention that afternoon highs are not necessarily going to drop from this. So all morning long, we've kind of been joking saying it's like a false fall. That's probably what it is. You know, decrease in humidity just for a little bit. Highs likely in the upper 80s. You know, some spots maybe nearing that 90 degree mark, but it's really the wake up temperatures in the 60s. Sunday morning, Monday morning and Tuesday morning. So we're really looking forward to that. And then we dry out. So it's really going to be a nice weekend for any of those outdoor plans that you have. Now I quickly want to leave you last minute here with the tropics five areas of disturbed weather that we're watching. Only one of them is an invest, meaning it's something that the National Hurricane Center is investigating. They're likely going to send the hurricane hunters through if they do think that this has the chance for developing. But over the next seven days, very low chances for it. As we near the peak of the hurricane season, even if we don't get, you know, another name stormed this week, it doesn't mean that it's still not a possibility. So please don't let your guard down because especially if anything moves into the Gulf, those waters are warm. So next name on the list would be Francine, Gordon, and then Helen. Now, Make sure you stick with us every day, 4 p.m. We have our tropical update that will be held by Miss Ramisha Shade today. So you can join her on the free Fox Local app. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day and happy Friday Eve.